It's the new movement, DJ Drewski. I'm in the spot. And always from Compton, TZ's pulled up. What's the deal, my boy? How you TZ doing? with three E's. With three motherfucking E's. <laughs> Listen, we got a lot to talk about. You played me about 10 records, and that was just some of the stuff that, that's not out yet that you played. You probably got a ton of records in the stash. For people that are just getting in tune, I want to just bring them back to the beginning. Because some of the records you played, I seen them like two years old. When did music like really start for you? Not playing around, but really taking it serious. Like, yo, I'm going to do this full time. Uh, Shit, like 2018, bro. I was fresh out the pen. I really ain't had no type of direction. You know, I was still hustling and shit. Right. And my mama made me promise her to give her like a year of just rapping. Like, stay out the streets and just rap for a year and let's see how far this shit take you. And I said about six months of that first year, I was already starting to take off. So, shit, I just kept it serious. From there. Mm. So, I said 2018. So, when you were sitting down, you wasn't even making music when you was locked yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you was, was in there. But yeah, but I wasn't like just serious. Like, I'm finna just get out and be a rapper. Like, hell no, I wanted to go hang with the homies and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you come home, make mama a promise. And then, you know, things start working out. Start rolling for sure. Like, seriously. I started doing uh, freestyles on Instagram. I started something called the Freestyle Friday mm. on Instagram. Every Friday, I came with a hot 16 bar freestyle. Every Friday, I ain't missed one for a year right. straight. And that shit took me off like crazy. Did you feel like people were surprised that TZ's now rapping from before you went to jail to when you came home? Like, Nah, hell no, because I was, I was always like, I had... He was, I was already rapping. in the mix. Yeah, he was already was talking your shit. For sure. I was, I was like popping before I went to jail, but jail like kind of stumped all that shit, you feel me? So I, I wasn't, I was popping, but I wasn't like just super duper duper serious, you feel me? But right. jail stopped everything. I had to rebuild it back up. So now they wasn't surprised. I was always like freestyle battling niggas, rapping over shit. We had a little group. That shit was cracking. Every, every, I was always rapping. So there was a, already motion. Yeah, yeah, high key. High but key. then it was like, all right, cool. Now it's time to really lock in and turn this shit all the ways up. Yeah, I was like the best decision they made. Rapping saved me. Rapping saved my life. We was looking in the book at some of the old like T-shirts and stuff. For you, though, as a kid coming up, who were you listening to that you know inspired your lifestyle and just everything that was going on around you? Bro, I ain't going to lie. When I was a kid... I think I was, like, way more musically inclined than a lot of people. Like, nigga, I was all uh, Slick Rick, Eric B. and Rakim, Tupac, motherfucking Ja Rule, Biggie, motherfucking... <laughs> Who else? I was really... I was off everybody, really. Shit, it wasn't nobody that, that was popping that I didn't have a bar of, you feel me? Because my parents was young and shit, so right. I was really off of everything. But, like, a big, big, big influence, i say, like, 50 Cent, Pac, mm. and Biggie, for sure. Because that, that's probably around the time you was feeling like you was a man at that point, right? Like, for sure. Even though you wasn't. <laughs> even though I was we look kid. back, you're like, yeah, I was still a kid. But you felt like, okay, that's that's more who I am. Yeah. But the stuff they talking is when I'm more involved in now as whatever, a teenager, or yeah. just finding yourself. And it's like, all right, cool. This is the type of music I like. Cause I can relate to it, hundred percent. I can tell you this: when Fifty Cent start dropping, when he dropped his first "Get Rich or Die Trying" to massacre that whole little series right there, you, right. you couldn't say nothing about cutting me. <laughs> <laughs> we did it for the fight over, bro. God, he was influencing everybody that I was around, bro. You couldn't say nothing. Like we thought we was from G Unit, hundred percent. We wanted the shoes, the fake right, everything, the shirts, throwing everything. up G Unit signs, okay. and <laughs> slapping people for no reason. But now, but now being an artist, right, yeah. and 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 a father too, do you feel or even when making your music, say, okay, cool, this might be influencing somebody, or this, you know, there might be a young boy listening to my music now. Does is that ever a thought, or is it just, yo, this is who I am, and this is the type of music I'm gonna make? You know, is there ever a thought in that process? I ain't even gonna lie, <laughs> I don't even think about that. Right, I just be like, this is who I am. Feel me? Whatever I'm feeling in my heart is what I'm going to put out there because if my shit taking the wrong influence on somebody that's too young to listen and shit, their parents don't need them listening to my shit. It ain't your fault. You feel it's me? their fault. Yeah, this is what I'm feeling in my heart. <laughs> right. Like, I went in the studio and put this out for my heart, nigga. So if this influenced you in the wrong way, then that mean you too young and you don't know how to, you feel me, discipline yourself to make your own decisions yet. Mm. That's how I feel. I don't never think about it because I don't go in there and just 
feel me? All my music ain't just like kill everything. Right, right of course. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's talking about real shit. Real shit. Everything I go in there and rap, like, nigga, I really be going through that shit at the time that I'm making that song, you feel me? So I go and really, like, go put my heart out. Unless I'm rapping about, like, some money or something. But all my music I make that influence somebody, I really was going through that shit. You mm. know? Like, that was, I'm talking about me at a, at a certain point in time, you know? Right, so when they when they listen back, it's like, yo, I'm not promoting nothing. I'm just telling you my experience, my story. Right, yeah, and I'm, if your I'm kids are listening, because you a father now, so you understand like discipline and and you know guarding certain things, and even having her a part of the music, right? Like she knows dad's an artist, a hundred percent. She, if I tell my daughter, like, man. She asked me for something, I'll be like, I ain't got no money. She'd be like, but in your song, you said you've never been a broke boy. That little money don't feel right. <laughs> you start like, calling you out on your bars. <laughs> no, for real. But, you know, even with me, with my daughter, she, I, I I teach her enough, you know, to be able to discipline herself. You feel me? What your dad talking about is music is your dad. like Right. Like, you can listen to certain stuff. If I'm talking about, like, female, whatever you want to call it, you feel me? Because even the player, the player part where you put it on, she tell them. That was her mom she was talking yeah, to? Yeah, that was her mom. Yeah. Like, like, even that. Like, she she understands. Like, she's having fun with it, too. Yeah. Even though, you know, she's, is she daddy's little girl? Is 100%. That? Yeah, that's my twin. That's my twin. Is she into music? Do you see little things about her? Like She can sing her ass off. And she want to already, like, rap and record and everything. Like, so, all, all her plays and shit at school, she's singing. Oh, so she's already active in it. So, in yeah. 10 years, she comes to you like, Dad... Can you take me to the studio? You with it? If she come to me tomorrow and be like, I'm ready to go to the studio. Right. I'm taking her to the studio for sure. So you not you don't press her, like force her to do nothing, but if she her decision. Right. hundred percent. But you know, she she wanna be just like me. That's my little twin. Right. Like I am a full time father, not like no halfway, no nothing. Mm. Like, you know, now my daughter live with me and everything, you feel me? So if she make the decision to wanna rap, we going right downstairs to the studio. I'm gonna turn the beat on and let her do her thing. There you go. See, just, we just had to jump into, like, dad life real quick. But that's the realest, you know what I'm saying? As a person, not even just as an artist, to be there to support your daughter and, and still follow your dream and make your music and be you. Like, that's the realest shit ever. So 100. shout out to you on that. I appreciate it. Speaking of other rappers, you had a Koi Ray story for us. Shout out to Koi. Because we in Jersey right now for people that are just watching this. And Koi's from Jersey. So she might be down the block, and if you know what I'm saying, maybe we get her to pull up. But we want to hear your Coyle Ray story. For anybody watching this, just know Coyle Ray, you, you <laughs> mine already, even though you don't know that. I love you, girl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but she was in LA, man. And uh, Kick Lock, I had a little party. Me and my boy, we go to the party and shit. It was somebody in there that know her. He tell me, like, man. I'm going to get you next to her, you feel me? Everybody know I love me some Coyle Ray. Right. So he's like, man, I'm going to get you next to her. I'm going to let you pop your shit. However way you come is how you come. But I'm going to make, I'm going to give you that little window, you feel me? So me and my boy, we sitting up there. We watching her in a little section. Not watching her, but we see her. Yeah, in yeah, section, she's in the party. And my boy get up on me. He's like, man, it's your time to shine. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fuck it, I got this, you feel me? I go. Was your shirt on at this point or was it off? Nah, my shirt was on. I was Okay, his dressed. shirt was still on. Yeah. All right, good. You know, you know when you like, like, and you get in trouble when you walk into the principal office <laughs> and you're, you're just feeling in your stomach like, man, I hope they don't right. know my mom. I don't know which way yeah. this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I had that feeling. So we get down there, the security and shit right there. My boy say something to security. They let me walk through. She's sitting on a little couch. I walk right to the back of the couch. She look at me. She gave me like this beautiful ass smile. It was, oh, she was so fun. <laughs> oh, God. And then when I look and it's time for me to talk, I just was like. <laughs> Froze up. I love you. <laughs> oh God, she's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, shit, I love you. Girl. Right. That's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. She's like, oh, yeah, man, whatever. Nice to meet you, man. Just send me on my way. But I feel like man, I'll be so much player and so many. That's boys, what I was going to say, because even in your music, you're talking that player shit. And I feel like I would even be like, yo, watch out. You know, keep your girl around, you know, from yeah. you because all that players. But she, she. She jammed you up. Bro, I'm so player in every <laughs> situation. I never choke. I never choke. I think that's really just like my super celebrity. Crush. Right. Like she looked better than all of the, the Ruby Rose, the Lottos, all that shit to a nigga. I ain't even gonna lie. Her. So that's, is that your type of woman? Like if you out, not just Koi, I'm saying, because people look at Koi, she's petite. She's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's little. 
that's the type of. I mean, you know, I really don't discriminate. <laughs> I like them all from eighteen to eighty. Blind cripple to crazy, mm. but Cola Ray, she different. Right, she different. I ain't gonna lie, she different. She's just topping everything. I think it's her personality that I give me. Mm. Like she fine as hell, but her personality is just crazy. Like you it can't just, tell her yeah. like she just skinny. You can't tell her she's not beautiful. You can't tell her she can't cook. You can't tell her she ain't a loke. You feel me? I like all that stuff about it. <laughs> oh no. Well, listen, Corey, if you're watching this, can you can you get a, a second chance? Maybe try again. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> 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 shout out to Coy Ray. That's sis right there. But listen, if you like little petite girls, that's that's you, it's easy. Yeah, hey, I don't worry about me get her. I'm gonna get her. Eight, eight to, what'd you say? 18 to 80? 18 to 80, blind cripple to crazy. I don't discriminate. What's been the oldest woman you've dated? When I was 16, I had a lady that was, I think she was like 44. Mm, so at 16? Yeah, 16. So she's, that's what. Like 30, almost 30 years older than you. Yeah, it's some years. It's some years for sure. I ain't going to lie. Since since I've been older, you know, I'm really, I don't know. I can't even say how was the oldest. You don't I even had. ask no more. Yeah, it ain't like, I it do ain't ask, question. but it ain't, I, I'm asking like further down, unless you look young, you feel me? Right, right, right of course. Like yeah, yeah, of course. 25, then I'm at. <laughs> but like uh, my age, but only, you feel me? We going to vibe. Just figure it out, you know. Are you in a situation right now? Nah, hell no. I'm single as a Pringle on a Saturday night. So listen, he's outside. He got new music dropping. The last project was, was it the Valentine's Day project? Yeah, No Love Left. That was no the Love Left. Yeah. That's the last one. That was the last one. I dropped a few singles from there, but the last one was No Love Left. Are, are we doing any shows back at home? You setting up any shows? Not right now. I'm kind of just focusing on the project. Like, you know, I I, I do a lot of shows. But I just, I'll never take the time to just put the energy into my work. You feel right. Me? As far as like promotion, really putting the work in behind the project and everything else. So I'm going to get that off the off the floor first. And then we're going to start setting up all the shows to go with it. So focus on the music right now. Yeah. Because he's still catching up to music videos that are dropping. And he don't even know that out. Yeah, okay. Shout out to the label. <laughs> so that's out now. <laughs> that's right? out that now. just dropped today. Peter Parker is out today. I know him, but shit, it's out today for sure. Right. Yeah. So by the time they watch this, it'll be out a couple of days. So make sure you go run that up. How can they tap in, follow you, you know what I'm saying, just to get on board with everything? On every platform, it's TZ, Day 1K, with three E's, T-E-E-E-Z-Y, underscore, Day 1K, on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever you whatever you want. It's TZ, Day 1K, on YouTube. You can just type the TZ, I'm going to pop right up. And before you slide, you got to explain the logo. Because we were talking about Jack and logos, right? Yeah. Explain the your logo. The Day 1K? No, the... the, the um, oh, this right here? Yeah. Oh, man. For y'all that don't know, it's for the big notorious Southside County. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this is for Southside County, man. I mean, it got a few meanings to it, man. My daughter named Soraya, but it's originally it's for Southside County. Shout out to the Southside. Shout out to the South, man. Because I seen, I seen it. One of the videos, you have one. But at the newer video, it was two. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I know it, it stands for something. Yeah, it's on my back, man. Oh, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah, I seen it on your back, too. Yeah, everything a nigga wear. Every, this shit everywhere. I ain't gonna lie. Speaking yeah. of your tats, you said you had a cream the cream um, yeah, boy, tattoo? It's my first tattoo. From Wu-Tang, man. They, they influenced me. It's my first tattoo ever. I got this shit when I was 15 years old. Boom. Oh God, let's fuck right with Wu-Tang. Have you been to Staten Island? Yeah, I've been there. Okay. Not this not this trip, but I've been there the last time I was right. there. I you went been to the, Bureau. I'm saying to like where Wu Tang Hood was and all that. You pulled up over there? See, I I can't say I've been to where they hood, but I just know we was everywhere around every part of New York. Like any part of New York you could think of. We caught the subway literally to everywhere. Walked to every everywhere else, jumped on the subway, like but I I, I don't know the hood that they from and everything else. Next time we we go, we shoot a video or something. I'll take you over there. We pull up. Yeah, easy, man. Educate me, man. Yeah, I got you. It's easy in the one. building. Drewski, the new movement. Listen, go tap in. Run it up. Tell these niggas how hard my shit is, man. Now they got to tune in August 9th. They going to hear everything. Ooh, I'm for the blow they mind. Let's go. Let's get Bow. it.